Hello everyone, welcome back to the minivan. I should be out hiking today, but I trusted the weather forecast. It was supposed to be cloudy and snowing, but of course it's a clear sunny day. So there's no hiking in this video. Maybe in the next one I can make it happen. But uh, some people have been wondering if I could do a gear overview. What do I bring with me when I go hiking? So I'll try to do that today. And uh, a few people have been wanting to see an updated van tour. So I'll try to add that in as well. But I'm uh, getting a good amount of solar today, about 6 amps right now. That's, uh, that's enough to run the slow cooker, so I'm going to do one last time with that as well. I'm going to make a root vegetable cider stew today. I watched that movie called The Game Changers last night and it put the fear in me. According to that movie, uh, if you cut meat out of your diet, there's some uh, incredible health benefits to it. You'll have higher energy levels, uh, more endurance, and quicker recovery times. I realize this has been a, a meat-based channel since the very beginning, so don't unsubscribe yet. I don't think I, I could ever completely cut meat out of my diet. Maybe I'll just have to uh, look at it differently, like a special occasion kind of thing. But uh, after that last hike I did, it took a good two days until I felt fully recovered, so I figured this was worth a shot. I'm going to rinse off the chickpeas now. Uh, some people wonder what do I do with my garbage. In towns like this there are recycling stations that you can go to and sort everything out. This one even has a bin for your compost as well. All right, we're almost there. I just have to assemble everything and turn it on, and then we can get on to other things. So this has to cook for about five hours on low and it's drying around six amps I'd say and I'm getting about five and a half amps out of my solar so it's not totally powered by solar but in the next couple weeks we should be getting there but uh, anyway let's uh, take a look at some of that hiking gear. We'll start out with my stinky old hiking boots. I got three different pairs that I'll use depending on the weather. These uh, Handwag Alaska GTX's are my main go-to. They're all leather and completely waterproof. You can step in a stream and your feet will stay dry. But uh, they took a long time to break in before they started to feel comfortable. And they're also really heavy. I wouldn't recommend them for a, a long multi-day hike because uh, they seem to wear out my legs a little quicker. And uh, for something called the Alaska, I thought they'd be warmer. I find below minus 10 Celsius and uh, my toes start to freeze up. So when I was up in Yellowknife, I ended up buying these uh, Wind River boots. They're rated to minus 40. Uh, but I still wear some thick wool socks underneath them and it seems to keep my toes warm but uh, these things are terrible to hike in. They've got no traction and I get blisters and they're also not waterproof. I stepped in a, in a creek and I ended up with two soaking wet feet but as for keeping my feet warm that's what they do and uh, that's why I bought them. So when the summer comes back around I'll start hiking in these again. They're uh, Merrill I'm not too sure the model Moab. <laughs> I can't remember anymore but uh, they're really lightweight and they have lots of ventilation I like to cycle in these. Uh, I use them a lot around in the, in the desert because my feet don't get so sweaty in these. But I also don't recommend these for long multi-day hikes. I seem to get sore feet with them. I don't really have a good uh, multi-day hiking shoe. I guess I'd probably lean towards the, the hand wags. But uh, if I ever am hiking in these and I have to cross a stream along the hike, I'll pack in my sandals too. Gators, these are important to keep the snow out of your boots. I just got these at Mech, they do all right. I might get a different pair for the summer to keep the pebbles out of my boots. Uh, 
crampons. These are a black diamond something or other. Or maybe I can post the name in the video later. But yeah, these just uh, strap onto any kind of boots and uh, they get the job done. The gloves, I don't really have anything special. I don't know what to say about these. I got these at Canadian Tire. Sometimes I pack both in in case one pair gets soaked. Sunglasses, I just got these cheapies at Walmart, but I'm tempted to buy something better. I've tried coating these in an anti-fog spray, but it just doesn't work. Every time I'm up on the side of a mountain, they fog up and I can't see what I'm doing. It's pretty irritating. So maybe I'll get some ski goggles or better sunglasses to solve that. So when it comes to jackets, you want to be dressing in layers. Uh, if it's minus 10 or 20 out and you're completely drenched in sweat, you've got a five hour hike back to your van, you could be in trouble. So I normally wear like a, a synthetic jersey underneath. These are easy to dry out. Um, then I have this uh, down jacket. Uh, these things are amazing. They're so lightweight and warm and they can press down so you can just throw them in your backpack. Um, they are really expensive. This is a Arcteryx model. <laughs> I don't remember what I paid but it was a lot I think. Uh, but I've had this thing for about five years and if you take care of them uh, they last and I'm pretty rough on my gear and this thing is still going strong. And then I've got a waterproof shell. This one's made by Mammoth. Uh, it's not Gore-Tex. I don't know what it is. It's their own proprietary material. But this one wasn't too expensive. It's mostly just about uh, cutting the wind chill. But as for waterproofness, I don't think it is. Even the Gore-Tex Pro, I've had a mid-range shell that cost about 300 bucks, and after two or three hours being out in the rain, it started to soak through. So I don't, I don't really have much faith in Gore-Tex. I know they make like those $900 shells. I don't know if they, if they make a difference, but for the average person, no one's ever going to buy one of those. I have a, a small like packable umbrella that I bring along. The main thing is that uh, if it starts to pour that you can find some shelter. I've got some Gore-Tex snow pants that I wear. I got these on eBay about five years ago. They're a really good deal on these. Uh, they're starting to get pretty beat up now. Lots of holes in them. But they shed the snow so I don't get all soaking wet and they cut the wind chill. I've got uh, good ventilation too. Depending on how cold it is I might wear some long johns underneath them. I've got tub snowshoes. These ones aren't designed for climbing mountains, but it's what I got. Um, I'm really disappointed in these actually. You see the binding is already broken. I had a zip tie through there, but it must have fallen out on the last hike. Um, these bindings, they're really, they're really handy and easy to use, but it puts a lot of pressure on the top of my foot and I don't like them. Not recommended. I'll do a bit of a van tour now and try to answer some of the questions people have been asking. Uh, first up, how long is my bed? Uh, I'm 5'7", and my bed is uh, 71 inches long. Uh, so 5'7's back here, 1, 2, 3, 4 inches longer than my height. Uh, my feet still do touch the wall, but it's adequate. I think on my next van build I'd go like 8 inches longer than my height, then I can just fully stretch out and not have to touch up against the walls. You can see where my bed originally ended, <laughs> and it was just way too cramped up, so I cut out this wall and extended it a bit further. And my bed is 22 inches wide, 15 inches to the top of the mattress. It's really important when you're designing the height of your bed that it's not too high. On my first attempt, uh, my head was touching a roof and I had to sit there like this, so I had to completely rip it out and start all over again. I sleep in my Enigma down quilt. I'm really happy with it. It's one of my favorite pieces of gear. It's a lot better than a sleeping bag because it doesn't have all that unnecessary fabric and down underneath you that just gets uh, compressed and doesn't provide any warmth. It also doesn't have any zippers, but it does have a foot box to keep your feet nice and warm. But I just wrap the sides of it underneath me while I sleep. It keeps me nice and warm and it's really good quality too. I've got a 2000 watt pure sign inverter, but uh, I don't use it above 700 watts. That's actually beyond what I'm supposed to be doing with my battery. But the reason why I got such a big inverter is in case I ever do a, another van build and I have a bigger electrical system, then I'll be ready to go. But it's important that you get a pure sign inverter if you want to run an induction cooktop or anything with a motor in it. If you try to do that with a modified sign, it's not going to work. As for camera gear, I just use my Huawei P30 Pro phone. I like how it has everything built in. It's got uh, an ultra-wide and telephoto lens. It's just so convenient to use and I can just throw it in my pocket. I just can't see myself uh, carrying a DSLR or a mirrorless and a bunch of lenses up the side of a mountain. It's just too much fiddling around. It's just way too fragile too. But with this phone, I'm a bit disappointed with the video stabilization and uh, the low light could be better. It's kind of grainy. 
these smartphones are only going to get better as the years go by and I think they do a good enough job for what I'm doing. I use a Mavic Air drone to capture the aerial footage in my videos. I really can't complain about this thing. It's, uh, it's a really amazing piece of technology. But, uh, the only problem around here is finding places to fly it. You can't uh, use these in national parks or provincial parks. There was some buzz around micro drones that they have less restrictions, but you can't fly those in uh, parks either. I've been able to fly this thing at uh, minus 20 Celsius without problems. Um, if, if you let the battery go below freezing though, it won't take off. So you have to make sure that it's warmed up before you take off. Uh, I wouldn't fly it below minus 20 Celsius. That's getting kind of risky. But uh, the only glitch with this thing that I've found is that nearly every time I try to start it up, uh, I have to calibrate the compass and you got to dance around and walk around in circles to make that happen. It's kind of annoying. I get the question a lot, uh, would I want a bigger van next time around? I think just slightly bigger would be nice. Uh, I like the looks of the 2020 Ford Transit. I'd get the short wheelbase and uh, the low roof. And you can also get all-wheel drive with that. But starting out with a cargo van would be much, much better to have that blank canvas. You can do so much more with that. But I think the reason why this van build has been popular on YouTube is because it's just so weird and no one else has really built out a minivan like this. So maybe I should uh, continue on with the weird builds. I like the looks of the Chevy Suburban. I think it's actually more spacious than this. And I can also get the four-wheel drive and uh, higher clearance too. But the important thing about building out a vehicle is that you make it as comfortable as possible. I've been watching a few of these uh, I Quit Van Life videos and uh, usually the reason why they quit is that their vans just weren't comfortable enough. I mean they might as well have been living in a cardboard box if it's just a bed and uh, nothing else to do. If you gotta if you got to deal with cold temperatures you need to have a heater. Um, you're going to be spending entire days inside your van so you got to have some entertainment and you got to be able to cook and uh, if you're going to do it you got to make sure you do it right. Well, I think I've shown all the angles that people are curious about. If there's anything else you want to see, let me know and I'll try to add it into a future video. That stew needs about another two hours to cook and I've run out of sunlight so I might have to go for a wee drive to help top up my battery. I'm honestly still underwhelmed with uh, my 40 amp DC to DC charger. I wish I could push at least 100 amps into my battery but uh, with my battery uh, they really only recommend charging it at 20 amps for maximum lifespan so I'm already way beyond what I should be doing. But uh, maybe I should have forked out the cash for a battle born, but uh, you live, you learn. Through the magic of video, my soup is ready and it's time to serve it up. It's not quite as an exciting uh, unveil as the pizza or the ribs, but this is about eating healthy, so it's worth a shot. Why does meat have to be so good? So you're supposed to serve this up with uh, some yogurt. I got some dairy-free almond-based yogurt. I'll put that in. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's a tasty meal. It's got a nice Indian flavor to it. And the apple cider stands out as well. Seems to be pretty filling. Uh, it's not quite ribs, but it's about eating healthy. So we'll have to wait and see if uh, the health benefits outweigh the taste buds. But if you have any uh, vegetarian or vegan recipes for the slow cooker you want to share, let me know. Maybe I'll try it out in the next video. So uh, I'm going to finish off this soup. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to Patreon supporters, and I'll see you in the next video.